Hi everyone, welcome back to Memories Dogma. We just took a short break from the stupidness that was the last episode. Yeah, we, we, we needed a cool down after that, you know? Just yeah, to yeah. chill a bit. Anyways, let's see what's up with little Reyna here. Reyna's standing there, flanked on both sides by researchers. Her hands are bound by some kind of metallic cuffs. The researchers push her forward and she stumbles into the room. Hiroki? Hiroki? Reyna! Reyna. When Reyna sees me, she tries to struggle, a struggle out of the researcher's grip and runs towards me. But... Don't move. It's Aoi-san's voice. Like, what the fuck, Aoi? She came in after Reyna and has a gun pointed at her back. Aoi-san. Aoi-san's looking down so I can't make out her expression. With a gun pointed at her back, Reyna looks at me like she's trying to tell me something while biting her lips. I'd wanted to believe that I'd just imagined seeing Aoi-san point a gun at us back there at the station. I had hoped it was just an optical illusion or something. However, the reality unfolding before my eyes right now dashes all hopes. What are you doing, Aoi-san? Why are you doing this to us? Say something, Aoi-san! Aoi-san does not look my way even once. She just stands there pointing her gun at Reina. Maybe Aoi-san is an acting of her own will. I really want to believe that. Are you being threatened? There's no way you actually want to do this, right? Kuroda-san. There's no way she wants to do this. As if to deny my words, Aoi-san interrupts me and begins speaking. I was told by Kuroda-san. For an instant, a wave of relief washes over me when I hear that. She was made to do this by Kuroda. In that case, she doesn't have a choice. That's what I assume she meant. However, her next words completely blow my expectations away. Cal surprise. If I do as he asks, he said he'll give me Serrano's memory data. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, you get, a, you get to have Serrano, who fucking hates you forever. I mean, like... But if you just give some the memory data, like, why not just, like, let you give you the option to buy it forever? I mean, obviously, poor people couldn't afford it, but it'd be better than just deleting everyone's memories, I imagine. Hmm. No way. Kuroda was obviously lying. If you think of everything he's done so far, it's clear he won't keep his promise. Do you really believe that, Aoi-san? If I don't do anything at this rate, Serrano's memories will vanish from the world sooner or later, so that's why... So that's why what? Serrano wouldn't want you to do something like this. And what right do you think you have to condemn me? Um, every right in the world, actually. I mean, they might be trying to steal her memory too, but like they haven't tried to shoot anyone, so you know, slightly. slightly Aoi-san's but... scream is filled with more grief than I've ever heard from her. Aoi-san glares at me and grips the gun even tighter. No, fuck, fuck her. Seriously, if I was in Hiroki's position, position, I'd be literally telling her, it's like, no, you're a fucking asshole, and if Serrano saw you right now, yeah. she would she would not even want to be your family anymore, and you're a fucking monster for doing this. I would be making her feel as fucking horrible as possible right now. Yeah, I mean, like, she is, she is in the wrong thing here. I get that, okay, it's an emotional time, but, like, still, don't, don't point a gun at her fucking friends and shit. Her eyes are filled with anger. Anger directed towards me, and anger directed toward her, towards herself. What's the difference in what you guys did and what I'm doing right now? I didn't, I didn't ask anyone to do it. Yeah. And the difference is... I didn't hold a gun to anyone's fucking head when I did it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This is all your fault, Hiroki. If you hadn't shown me Serrano again back then, I would have just been able to give up on her. I always saw her averts her gaze and smile sadly. I kept telling myself Serrano's no longer here and you need to accept that the whole time. So I'm not letting the voices play, sorry. No. But then, when Serrano appeared before me again, I knew. Raina starts crying after she hears Aoi's story. Why is the game lagging slightly there? Hmm. I don't know. Raina desperately holds back her sobs as tears begin to streak, streak down her face as well. I'm sorry. So sorry.
There's nothing you need to apologize for. I decided all of this for myself. As she finishes speaking, I can see the resolve in her eyes. It's impossible to change how we saw in mind now. I'm, don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. As we've learned time and time again, even my thousands of dollar computer can't handle a fucking visual novel. I thought it was only a thousand dollars. Two thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand dollar Canadian. So like ten Monopoly money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I hear the sound of applause coming from the uh, AR display. Man, that was a great show. I even feel like crying after watching that. It's exactly as Aoi-kun said. Do you understand now, Kusahara-kun? Kuroda glares at me. You're the only one I'll never forgive. I'll stop his ambition no matter the cost. If I don't, I won't be able to get Serrano, Reina, and Aoi-san back. I don't really need your forgiveness, you know? Have you taken a look at what kind of situation you're in right now? And this was just the prologue. The real thing starts now. Now, gentlemen, let us proceed to the next stage. Make the preparations. I see Kuroda stand up and raise his hand through the AR display. At his signal, the researchers all start moving at once. One of them heads over to the stretcher I'm on and removes just the belt restraining my left wrist. Another one brings some kind of metal gadget over to me. What's this? The researchers just silently put the gadget on the stretcher and attach it to my left wrist. Shit, stop! I try and struggle, but only my left arm from the elbow down is free to move, so there's not really much I can do to stop them from affixating, affixing the gadget to my arm. Once my wrist is completely attached to the gadget, the researchers try putting my fingers onto the grooves at the end of it one by one. I curl my hand up trying to resist. I clench my hands to try and stop them, and another researcher brings over a cylind cylindrical rod and taps my arm with it. Gah. The moment he does so, a strong electrical shock runs through my body, and I reflexively unclench my hands. The instant I do so, the researchers put my fingers in place. With that, they manage to restrain each of my fingers all the way up to the second joint. There's an AR display next to the machine, letting out an electric beep at periodic intervals. My heart starts to beat faster. What is all this? What's going to happen next? Now then, Kusahara-kun. I am very interested in learning about your recovery abilities. One of the researchers standing next to the door walks over to Aoi-san. He takes Aoi-san's gun and hands her something else in its place. And this is... She's staring in confusion at what's just been handed to her. Like a knife or something, I guess? Aoi-kun, you will with your hands. Cut off one of Kusahara-kun's fingers. Okay, Ma questions. First of all, once again, hypocritical to his entire beliefs of making people suffering and creating a world where people with these powers cannot suffer. Second of all, why the fuck does Aoi have to be the one to do this? Extra dickishness and dramaticness. Like, it's, he's, he's just basically a Bond villain. And yes, yes, I would like to agree with you that literally... We stopped at the end of the scene where he was discussing his ideology. We're discuss we, we stopped at the end of the scene where he's discussing his ideology. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we ended that on a cliffhanger. And now we're continuing. And, like, within ten minutes, he's already contradicting himself even more. Yes. Like, they completely forgot about that. Huh. Did Corona-san just say what I think he did? Did I, I look at the object in Aoi-san's hand? It almost looks like a pair of pliers, except the ends are edged and made for cutting. So, scissors... But when I look at the edged ends, are longer than usual and curved in a strange way. Aoi-san's holding the pliers with a bewildered look on her face. Don't worry, they're designed so even a girl like you can use them easily. Kuroda gestures to me, urging Aoi-san on. Now go ahead. I, I can't! Aoi-san presses the pliers to her chest and shakes her head. Mm, so you can't do it then? I see. Kuroda looks at her indifferently. 
I was simply trying to give you a chance. If you really don't mind never being able to see your precious little sister again, then... This guy is just fucking... Uh, like, there's no reason for Aoi to be doing this. He's just, he's literally just, they, they like, they're just trying to, to print the word evil over his face as many times as possible now. Yeah, I mean, like, he may as well just throw a puppy in a blender and drink it at that point. Like, please no. wait. <laughs> uh, sure, I'll wait as long as you need. We have nothing but time, after all. But don't forget that Serrano's memories are on a time limit. All right. Serrano's memories on a time limit. Is like they're going to delete her? No, shouldn't it be Serrano's memories are on a time limit? Kind of. I guess you can kind of say it that way, but yeah, it's I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put it past them for a typo. What? Kuroda, shut the hell up. I don't care either way. The decision is yours. Now we saw on stairs at the object in her hand, pale-faced. She's seriously considering it. Whether or not she will cross that line and throw her morality away. Aoi-san, don't be deceived by what he says. Please, you can still... Aoi-san looks at me. Oh, he's losing a finger. The resolve in her eyes is almost too painful to look at. I can still turn back. Is that what you were going to say, Hiroki? Turn back to what exactly? Turn back to a world without Serrano? What's left in my life to go back to? Well, there's a lot of cats in her room, like those little plushies, and then you have those. Aoi-san walks over to me, holding the pliers tightly. Aoi-san. Stop, Aoi! Reina yells at Aoi-san and tries to go after her, but the researchers hold her back. Let me go! No! Hiroki! Aoi! Aoi-san doesn't once turn back to Reina as she deliberately walks over to me. My heart starts lurching as if it's suddenly come alive. My breath comes in short gasps, my heart's beating so fast it hurts. Ditto you know, for Christian because he likes the yan yans. No, she's kind of a bit, just a major bitch in this situation. Like, oh. you know, you know, Aoi-san is high-tier waifu in terms of visuals, but, you know, yeah, it, this kind of cra cra craziness, you know, it just doesn't do anything for my like of the Andares. So she she would only be doing, you'd only like She's it. She's a bitch, okay? Okay, so you'd only like it if she was like, oh, you were talking to Serrano, weren't you, and not me. There goes your fingers, motherfucker. Like, then, then it'd yeah, be like... Be better, sure, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Be Gaspari approved. Yeah, cool. She can't. Nothing good will come from this. I need to get away from Aoi-san. I struggle with all my strength to try and escape the stretcher I'm strapped down to. The only sound that can be heard in the room are Aoi-san's footsteps and my stretcher clattering. Wow, that, that, that thigh gap there. Yeah. Finally, Aoi-san stops in front of my left arm. I'm about to say Aoi-san when I suddenly gasp. Aoi-san's eyes. Though tears are still streaming down her face, her eyes have become devoid of all expression. Aoi-san is really going to cut my finger off. Now then, Kusahara-kun, which finger do you think we should start with? Oh, you're setting this you're setting this insult up so fucking easy. Oh, uh, middle finger? Yeah. 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 Middle finger. <laughs> middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> it actually lets us choose. <laughs> Did you know the sensation? I can't believe it actually let us pick that. Yeah, yeah. For a second, I thought, like, what, what was this? What, why did it give us two options for a second? I was wondering. Well, I going. guess to split into more options so you could, like, process what you're thinking about. But, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, that's kind of yeah. kind of a weird thing. But <laughs> do you did you know the sensation of feeling for your fingertips and the sensation of feeling for the palm of your hand split at the nerves in the center of your ring finger? See, I actually was gonna say the ring finger, but only because like the pinky's kind of useful, and you know we're not gonna get married, so don't need the ring finger. In other words, if we want to observe how you recover after having the nerves in your hand cut off, that we'd get the best results by cutting off your ring finger. Okay, so once again, that choice was just irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, other than to make you feel like an edge lord. Yeah. Now then, Aoi-kun, if you would be so kind. 
Aoi-san does as she's told and takes my left hand. Please stop. I desperately try to move my fingers on my left hand to somehow escape what I know is coming. However, my resistance is futile and Aoi-san grasps my left ring finger with her hand. Aoi-san's hand is dreadfully cold. I can tell that her fingers are shaking slightly. I sun suddenly I feel the cold edge of the blade at my finger joint. Ow. Ow. <gasps> I'm so cold my body is trembling. The cold coming off the blade in Aoi-san's hand is spreading throughout my entire body. Why did things turn out this way? My teeth are chattering, the noise of them clicking together echoing in my head. Yeah, but it, it's as far as like that whole like sympathetic pain that you get when seeing something. I know for me, like fingernails are things that always do that to me. Mm -hmm. Like like people getting their fingernails fucked up. I don't know why. But oh, you like... want to see something really, you want to imagine something really painful. So imagine just sort of sticking, yeah. sticking like a toothpick and at the point on your big toe, just underneath the no, fingernail. Okay, right, that's like, the and then SpongeBob. kick it into the wall. Yeah, that, that's like that's like the SpongeBob one where it's like Squidward's toenail. It's like yeah. That would be painful. Anyways, uh, yeah. uh, Hiroki's about to get dismembered here. Yeah. Sweat is pouring down my forehead. Uh, ten bucks says she doesn't have the balls to do it. Ovaries. Whatever. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess you don't care, but you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> owie, please stop. Owie's going to give me an owie. Okay. Well, that could be the title, you know, Owie. That's a spoiler. No, but not not Owie's gonna give me an Owie, but literally just Owie. Oh, okay. Like, like, ouch. It doesn't, that looks weird in a title, though. Trying to shut out Raina's desperate pleas and her own feelings, Owie-san tightly shuts her eyes. Hiroki. Sorry, Hiroki. Oh, crap, she's gonna do it. Owie-san mutters just that before applying force to the plier's end. Owie-san, wait. Wait. Oh! It was at that moment I realized I was kind of a masochist. I, I just noticed I could I could still the menu still worked even as it was shaking around. I found that amusing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, Hiroki's uh, just just finished reading the last scene. That's <laughs> as, as referenced by that painful dialogue. Yeah. Pain blots out any other thoughts. Gah ha ha. Uh. No. I mean, but he's obviously not going to give her out. He's just going to say, oh, but you didn't do enough within the time limit. Her, 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 you know, like. Congratulations, Aoi-kun. You've endured a difficult choice and gotten one step closer to your dream. For just the price of your friend's finger, your dear sister will come back to you. I'd say that's pretty cheap, haha. <laughs> Roki, someone please stop the bleeding. Raina's shouting brings me back to my senses. Huh? It feels like fireworks are going off inside my head. My blurry vision gradually grows clearer, and the world goes from pure white to one of color. The feeling in my left hand has long since suppressed the pain. Surpassed the pain it is now nothing more than a burning sensation. Aoi-san. Aoi-san squatting on the ground, her head cradled in her hands. Her hands are shaking tremendously, her eyes unfocused. The pliers are on the floor, covered in blood. Oh yeah, she actually cut my finger off. <laughs> Aoi san's no longer able to form words, her voice coming out in garbled sobs. <laughs> I suppose that was a bit too stimulating for our friend here. <laughs> Gentlemen, would you kindly escort Aoi to Kun to another room? At Kuroda's command, the researchers half drag Aoi san to the door. Aoi-san. 
Aoi-san doesn't respond to the words I'm barely able to rasp out. The researchers then drag her out the door and she disappears down the hallway. Now then, how do you feel, Kusahara-kun? This bastard, because of him, Aoi-san, I'd only been able to feel a burning sensation before, but the pain is finally starting to return to my left hand. Kuroda, you bastard. I want to make him feel this pain. No, I want to make him feel pain even worse than this. I want to make that pitch black man in front of me suffer even worse than I am. Ah, uh, very good. Very good indeed. Can't have you dying on me just yet. I was tempted to make a joke about like, oh, make him play and then insert some bad game you've played here, but like, I couldn't really think of one. <laughs> However, it looks like an entire body part is a bit too much for even your powers to regenerate. Well, I can't say I didn't expect this. Now let's see how your breathing and blood pressure are doing. Again, the man who wants to end discrimination against people with, with, uh, against people that are, yeah, against people with differences to create a better place. Where the weak are oppressed by the strong or something because they all are different from powers. Yeah. Or, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't give a shit. This, um, this guy is a fucking moron. Also, I like how they're saying, let's see how your blood pressure's doing. Um, you're bleeding from a finger. It, it, like, even if you heal that, your blood pressure isn't good until you heal it again. Yeah. That's kind of how blood pressure works. Kuroda looks at another AR display that shows a few numbers, nods, and looks back to me. Now then, I hope this little experiment showed you what it means to stand on the side of the conquerors. Yeah, you're just as fucking stupid as we thought. Yeah. Kuroda says his voice completely devoid of any feeling. He doesn't feel guilty about this one bit. Experiment? Are you sure you don't mean torture? That depends on the goals and thoughts of the man on the administer administering side. This is all important research for the future that is to come. How on earth is this? You'll understand soon enough. Now then, I don't think we're going to understand it at all. Well, we couldn't understand it when he tried to spell it out to us because it's the most incoherent, pretentious shit ever written mm -hmm. on paper. This is not an order, but a request from the bottom of my heart, Kusahara-kun. Won't you stand with us? This isn't an order, but if you don't do what we say, we're gonna mutilate and torture you. I mean, I'm not saying that, but we did already cut off a previous finger. And we traumatized a f good friend of yours for literally no reason. Like, literally, there was no reason for her to cut off, be the one to cut off your finger. In fact, was there even a reason for her to even be using a gun at any point in this story? I mean, she's she has really no training with using a gun, so it's not I mean, like that'd be a good It's not like idea. we have a bunch of thugs in suits for that. Or I like, mean, all we really needed to do was get her to leave her house so we could send our men in, like, seriously. I mean, we could have just, like, called her and pretended to be someone else. We're like, gonna be here all day, let's yeah. move on. Yeah. Won't you stand with us? A request from the bottom of your heart. That's but, nothing um, more than the threat, and you know it. You can force me to obey if you want. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that, like, one of the overarching critiques of this, aside from, like, the bad writing, is that it's the length of the writing. Like, so many scenes in this are just seem completely extraneous. Mm hmm Like, like that scene where he discusses his ideology. It, like, does this have any impact on what he's doing? No. No, exactly. Like, we're, we're like, three minutes, we're, like, ten minutes after it, and he's already completely forgotten anything about that. Like, if he just said, like, Oh, I'm gonna be powerful, and like it was one sentence. Yeah, it'd be the same fucking thing as what he's doing right now. Yeah. Or he just said, "Oh, I, I just, I just get turned on by raping puppies, and I'm an <laughs> evil asshole." Like again, it's the same effect. If I say I've changed my mind, maybe the torture will end here, but that won't change anything really. Even if I escape this room, all that would remain is becoming Kuroda's pawn, like Sigma, and dying in the end anyway. That's even more humiliating than dying here. Kusahara-kun, Kuroda asks for an answer, and I simply glare back at him silently. That's the greatest act of defiance I can do right now. I see, very well. In that case, we shall continue. I hope you are prepared, Kusahara-kun. Well, I mean, in the sense, you know, you could kind of just... 
go with it because, like, you know, they kind of have Reyna here. Yeah. They probably want... not. not I'm not going to let her go with the imaginary cuffs or anything to do with it. Have anything to do with it. Yeah. I look over at Reyna. She's been crying and screaming this whole time. She looks completely exhausted. Tears of despair well up in her eyes. Hiroki, what should I do? Close your eyes. That's all I'm able to force out of my horse throat. By the way, there's something I've always been wondering. Philosophy thing. When your left ring finger was cut off, it was clearly cut off from you. In other words, you was the part that was left over. That much is obvious still. But how much can we cut off before it's no longer you and we don't know which part is which? But if I split you cleanly in half from head down, which half would be you? Which part would still have your consciousness? Okay, this guy's just literally fucking insane. Like, he's probably not even wearing pants this whole time. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. He's just completely naked, like, rock hard, just, you know, like, spanking it to all of this, like... Probably some, like, I'm underage. gonna create a world without discrimination! I mean, he probably has, like, some underage Vietnamese prostitutes, like, in the room right now. Like, like, fucking doing rails. <laughs> Chills run down my spine when I hear Kuroda say that. If it's the side with the greater volume of mass, I guess your left side would lose out since it's already lost a finger. Or perhaps it's the dominant side of your brain that will retain your consciousness. I'll be dead. Yeah, you're split in half. Neither side retains the consciousness. Like, if you were to say, like, oh, like, I take your brain and put it in a jar like some 1950s B-list sci-fi movie, okay, sure, that's an interesting question. And then you pick parts of the brain away slowly. You could say, at what point do you stop being you? Like, at what point do you lose your consciousness or whatever? Like... Sure, but you're talking about just cut him in half with a giant fucking pair of scissors, like, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. The conversation's moot. They're both equally him in that they're both a corpse. <laughs> yep, it's true. I would believe you're right-handed, so that would mean the left side of your brain is the dominant one. Or perhaps it will just mean that there will be two yous. This motherfucker can't even do, like, dumb philosophical questions. Interesting. How did this get even get translated? Uh, it's a uh, Seikai project. Did it? it got kickstarted, actually. For the translation, or...? Um, I think the game itself, but I'd, I'd have to check it again. I suddenly imagine them cutting me in half with a chainsaw. I mean, but this is basically just like the really underrated version of Mighty Number no. 9, just in visual novel format. I imagine what it would feel like to have my head cut open by a chainsaw. I guess that's unfair, because Mighty Number no. 9 had hype for it. Well, I can see why he, the guy had to go to Kickstarter, because I don't think any, any high studios uh, returned any of his calls or letters. Yeah. Like, quite clearly why. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the premise seemed like it had potential, but that's only because they lied about what the premise actually was. <laughs> they told yeah. me it was about stupid X-Men mind-reading powers and, like, lightning punches. I would have been like, oh, well, this is just stupid. I don't give a shit. I seriously, I'm, I'm tempted to just write a, a really, really long Steam review, and it will be the first Steam review in my life I ever leave. Oh, yeah, no, 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 totes, totes do that. You can, <laughs> you can, like, plug it in at the end of the uh, last <sighs> episode. How painful would it be? And what would happen to me afterwards? What would happen to me after? You'd be dead! There's no afterwards! I guess if you're religious, there's like an afterlife, maybe, but you know. like, Yeah, as far as like your living part, no, that's fucking done. It's scary imagining something that surpasses your understanding, isn't it? Yeah, you, you must have been shivering with fear all in the last scene then. Yeah. All last episode, he was just sh quaking in his boots from everything, every word out of his, out of his mouth. Yeah. Well, we'll leave that part for the end. There's still much more to be done, Kusahara-kun. 
Now, gentlemen, on to the next stage. Oh, for fuck. Is this just gonna be a torture scene for the next hour? I just wanna click the fucking skip button, like... I know! <laughs> I'm, like, I think this part has overstayed its welcome. I know, and I know we're stopping a lot on it, but we need, I need to I'll let the world know how much I hate things I sometimes. mean, the game overstayed its welcome at this point, but, like, fuck, this is, like, this is, like, the Mount Everest of overstaying its fucking welcome. Like, Researchers once again start wordlessly preparing another machine. They gather around me and restrain my head this time. Last part of my body to have any free range of movement at all. Once they finish with that, I feel them tighten all the other belts restraining my body. My head's been completely restricted. I can't move it left, right, up, or down. I desperately strain my eyes and try to catch a glimpse of what they've done to my head. No matter how far I move my eyes, I can't see what it is. Unfortunately, I need to tighten your restraints. The next set of experiments I'm about to conduct are all very delicate. I'm sure they will be very painful, but please try to take it in stride. What? Now in the year 2030, we've finally been able to map all the brain's functions. We know which part of the brain is in charge of doing what now. But we're still not completely sure of what happens to people when those portions of the brain are destroyed. You motherfuckers. Like, it, it, we know what the brain does, but when you destroy it, what happens? Well, obviously you lose that fucking function. Like, that that should be pretty straightforward. It's like, maybe there's some extra side effects, but I mean, the gist of it is there. What is that? What is it that people can and can't understand anymore? What kind of feelings they have? We don't know any of that. I hear a high-pitched metallic whirly whirring close to my left ear. I mean, it's this, a sound you hear at the dentist. I mean, this is already stupid because we have examples of real-life people who survive brain damage. Like, if you know what parts of the brain was damaged and you know what the parts of the brains do, and you know how that person changed their behavior, you know, you just put some shit together and it's like map. You add all the shit together. Yeah, but you someone get the needs equal to sign but the right, and the number. Trevor, the writer needs to, needs to write a two-hour freaking fetish torture scene, though. Yeah, but th now, I'm convinced this whole game is just an excuse for this part now. I but it's not even that because then it would be fucking torturing Reina or something, and she'd be well, like, "Well, maybe oh, the guy's no. fetish is being tortured while a cute Moe girl watches or something." Okay, but then then it would be more fucking Reina and Serrano here doing it. Like she disappeared. Like they're showing this fucking old guy. If this was a fetish thing, it'd be like Reina be like, "Aha! I'm actually evil the whole time. You're a fucking stupid cuck. Now you're getting tortured for two hours." Like okay. Anyways, we're gonna be here all day. Start moving my apparatus. Yeah, something starts moving on the apparatus they put my head in. My heart feels like it's being squeezed in a vice as terror ass assails me. Wait, stop! Let's see how you act after certain brain functions of yours are destroyed. Okay, this is the pretentious quote at the beginning. It's a whole thing like, oh, how do I know if my memories are mine or whatever and stuff like that. Like, he's going to destroy parts of the brain, he's going to recover them. It's like, oh, do I, do I know what my memories are anymore? Yeah. The like... madness in Kuroda's eyes make me tremble in fear. The dreadful whirring noises keep getting closer and closer. Goosebumps rise on the end of my left side of my face, and I tightly clench my right hand. I recommend staying as still as possible. <laughs> Gah. There's a momentary silent sensation of a needle stabbing into me, but many times more painful. Jesus Christ. Gah. A second later, I feel a hard impact on the left side of my temple. There's a place in the brain called the Brocus area that controls your language fac faculties. faculties. Uh, they're also known as the 44th and 45th Broadman, Broadman areas. See, I'm saying factual things over this scene as a co to contrast the horrible torture that's happening. Yeah. They exist in the left side of your frontal lobe. Let's start with destroying those. You know, see, the lights are flickering to imply bad things. <laughs> I feel the pain of my skin being scraped away, along with the feeling of the bones inside my head vibrating. Ow. There's a really strong pressure as I feel something shoved deep inside my head from the left temple. 
So yeah, it just, it just feels like this is going for shock value at this point. Yeah, because like if you're doing actual science shit, there's a way to open up someone's head that isn't incredibly brutal and painful. Like they have like special kind of scalpels and like, yeah. and like, that's the thing. Like it, it's just, again, this is just stupid torture points. Like, okay, like in, in real life, they wanted to test this. They put you under anesthetics, do that shit and then like see what happens and you'd heal back up or whatever and they wouldn't give a shit. But no, in this case, it's just like, oh, we got to be edgy. Yeah. We gotta make them bad as evil as possible. Hiroki, Hiroki. No, we gotta, we gotta make. Also, your I'm pretty sure cry. the lights aren't flickering. I'm pretty sure that's just him like blinking or blacking yeah. out for a split second. Yeah. I hear Reina screaming from far away. Yeah, but basically this is. Oh, oh! Don't you feel bad for your waifu? And isn't this guy an asshole? Is the chief faint? It feels like a ridiculously long amount of time has passed. When I come back to my senses, I realize that high pitched whir and whatever it was that hit my temple have both vanished. Ha ha! The left side of my temple is bleeding. I can feel the blood running down it through the pain. When I look over at Reyna, I see that she's trying to squirm towards me, even though both her arms are held by a researcher. Reyna, it's dangerous, so stay back, is what I try and say, but... Back, Reyna, stay. Uh, also, it's black, huh? Is that really what I just said? Yeah, his language faculties were destroyed. Just as a string of words that lack any sense of coherency. The moment I try and speak aloud the words I'm thinking in my head, they get all jumbled up. So what's the excuse for the rest of the visual novel? There are errors in the pronunciation of pho pho phonemies? Is that it? Um, I don't super know, but phone yeah. Phonemy? Phone phone uh, whatever. Phonemes, I guess? They are both transposed and substituted out incorrectly, so a complete loss of verbal fluency then. What is Kuroda saying? What's happening to me? Kusarahara-kun, please take a look at my finger. Kuroda raises his right index finger and slowly moves it back and forth. I follow the movement with my eyes. I see, so your auditory understanding of language remains intact. By the way, how does the right side of your body feel? Can you try moving your right arm and leg? After Kuroda says that, I realize for the first time I have no feeling in the left and No feeling left in the right side of yeah. my body. Yeah. Left in the right side of my body. I try putting some strength into my right hand, but it doesn't move at all. What? Why is this happening to me? Someone save me, Reina! Renai Nare. It's no good. I can't even say Reina's name right. How could you? What point is there to this experiment? I guess the only silver lining is that I can still understand her words. There is a point. If he's able to use his power to recover all of his lost faculties, that will mean your microchip is a resounding success, Orikasa-kun. I don't even give a shit. He doesn't even give a shit. You'll finally have been used to the medical world. It's like a dream come true, isn't it? This isn't what... Oh, fuck off. Long ago, there lived a French poet called Baud Baudelaire. When he was 45, he suffered from a cerebral hemorrhage and, like you, lost the ability to speak properly. Um, that's the guy that was quoted in the Flowers of Evil manga. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like Nietzsche for people who are like, Nietzsche's too mainstream. I gotta quote the real obscure edgelords. Joy, anger, sorrow. The poet who had been able to express those emotions when such death was ironically reduced to cursing and despair after he was hospitalized. By the way, out of edgy philosophers, Max Stirner is the best. Mm. Kusahara-kun, if you're able to recover from this damage, then by investigating your recovery process, you'll be able to treat those who are like that, that unfortunate. Oh. No, no, you're torturing me for a, for fetish reasons. Like, there, there is no other reason for this. Like, Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, you can cure their brain damage, but you can't like, cure their At edge. this point, like, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm honestly cannot for the life of me fucking tell off. Like, they're just, they're just trying too hard to make them fucking evil or the writers actually fucking are just this stupid 
and and like couldn't couldn't think of a better reason for to for for seeing our hero in peril or something. Like yeah. they just really fucking forced it. Uh, yeah. Rhoda. Now then, next we'll test test the limits of your spatial rec recognition. Rhoda raises his hand once again. I hear that high pitched whir again. The next moment, a needle snaps to the back of my head. Ah. Uh, There's an extreme sense of pressure on the back of my head. The vibration is so strong it feels like it's tearing my skull apart from the inside. I close my eyes and grit my teeth. The term they use for it in psychology is vis visiospatial. Visiospatial. It's used specifically to mean the sense of perception you get from the visual information that passes through your eyes. Sight is simply one of those senses. It's only when you grasp the diff distance, direction, form, and depth of the object you're seeing and put it all together that it can be called perception. So now let us see what happens if we destroy the cerebral area associated with one of those component factors of perception. I won't be able to see anymore. That's what will happen. Or at least not understand what you're seeing. As the vibration grows stronger, my left hand and temple, left temple start to hurt. All I'm capable of doing is praying for the pain to end. Gah. Eventually the storm passes and the high-pitched whirring stops. Oh. Really? Oh, fuck off! Oh my god, it, it's playing like reversed music right now! Okay, can I listen to it? Yes! Oh! Oh right, yeah, I heard this one in the OST. Yeah, it, it's it's literally the reverse of the th game's theme song. Even the title on it is named that. But like, this is stupid. Oh, I'm sorry, you have brain damage. Now you see in cubism. Can we? Please? How much time do you have in this fucking episode? No, I'm sorry, we have another 15 minutes to go, Christian. I'm sorry, you're gonna deal with cubics? Oh, fuck. It'll make a good thumbnail. It'll make a good thumbnail, it's the only fucking thing I can say, but yeah, like, and see, like, today, today, I, I showed up early and was like, hey, Christian, the game, we're two-thirds of the way through, let, let's just, let's just bang through this tonight, like, you know, let's try to get it out, of, I, that was the worst fucking decision. I know, and we're gonna have more to go through, we're not uh, gonna get it all done tonight. Yeah, no, no, exactly, I'm aware of that, but the problem is that, like, the next time we have to sit down and do this shit, it's getting worse. I know. Like, I know the joke was that, oh, it keeps getting dumber. But it does. I didn't think of the implications of that. I never considered th what the actual implications of, of that problem are. I know. It just keeps getting dumber. I, I thought it was like, oh no, this is a wonderful little journey. Guys, no, no, no. Th this, is, th th this is like, this is basically fucking Doki Doki Literature Club at this point. It's like, guys, we went too far. We played with it. We, we heard the warnings, we ignored it. No. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> okay, let's just get through this and careful not to hit the, hit the yeah, swan. Yeah, alright, yeah, I'm sorry. When I open my eyes, I start shivering in fear. What's going on? How does the world look like... Oh, that's a 1-800. Is that? No, no. That's... Who is calling me right now? How does the world look in your eyes now? Well, it looks like a really, really freaking pretentious... Pretentious as all hell... It, it's piece like, of shit. It's like someone looked at Picasso, but didn't really know what Picasso was. Yeah. So they did a really poor imitation. How does the world look in your eyes now? Just opening my eyes makes me dizzy enough to vomit. Within my warped world, I'm still able to make out Kuroda smiling smugly. Mm, so even after being, been driven this far, your power still doesn't activate. That in and of itself is very interesting. Death. Within my shattered consciousness, there's only one question that remains. Which would be more painful at this point, living or dying? He's stolen my finger, my words, and now even my spatial perception. What will he take next? Huh. My consciousness starts to fade. I no longer even feel the pain. I think I'm starting to go crazy. Or maybe I'm already insane. Maybe the very scene in front of me is just my imagination. I hear Kuroda saying a kind voice. 
Don't worry, we've made special care to keep his recovery abilities intact. Now then, next is... As my consciousness fades away, I hear that whirring start up again. Please, just stop. I don't want to lose anything else. I keep screaming incoherently. Screaming is the only way I have left to assure myself I'm still in this world. But then suddenly my vision goes black. Like a computer that crashed and shut down. I wasn't prepared for it at all. It just happened. Yet another thing has been stolen from me. What's next? How much more do I need to lose before it ends? So, like I said this before, but I'm pretty sure his powers only work when he's protecting someone. How, how does that work in a scientific sense? Isn't protecting yourself, like, a natural thing that would cause it to... I don't fucking know. Yeah, but you see, your problem is that you're assuming there's a scientific explanation for magic bullshit X-Men powers. But eventually I stopped being able to hear my own screams. Is that the cafe? I feel something warm on my right side and open my eyes. This is... I lift my head and look around. There are a few wooden tables lined up, all cast in a warm orange glow. This is the inside of the cake store. There's no one sitting at any of the tables. There's no staff, no guests, no one here at all. I turn back to the entrance, but as I thought, there's no one there either. But is there any cake? I mean, that's kind of the important part. <gasps> ah, Hirokun, finally awake? <coughs> ah. The sudden voice startles me and I reflexively stand up. What's wrong, Hirokun? Serrano is sitting on the seat across from me. I could have sworn there was no one else in that seat a second ago. Serrano, you... Fufu, <laughs> you're off in dreamland again, I see, Hirokun. You, feel, you still haven't finished your cake yet, you know? I look down at the table, and there is indeed a half-eaten shortcake in front of me. But I could have sworn there was nothing on the table a second ago. That's not all. There's steam rising from a teacup filled with black tea next to it. I guess I really must have been daydreaming. I put my hand on the chair and sit back down. I can hear the echoes of children from far away. Voices of children follow far away. The tea smells really good. Hurry up and finish your cake. Yeah. I pick up the fork sitting next to the plate and slowly cut a piece of cake. I then put the fork in my mouth. It's sweet. An elegant sweetness spreads throughout my mouth. I enjoy the sweet sensation of the whipped cream melting in my mouth. For some reason I feel extremely happy to be able to enjoy a cake like this. Making sure it's really real, I slowly savor the sweet taste in my mouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess that, but here's the thing, I'm giving this game a lot of credit when I say this. I think they're trying to be really subtle and maybe Hiroki just died and he's finally where Serrano is. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm thinking too. That would be clever though, so it's probably not. Um, what I'm thinking is they're gonna pull some bullshit where it's like, oh, but then I recover with my magic shonen determination powers and like, yeah, then he's back. Yeah. Making sure it's really real, I slowly savor the sweet taste in my mouth. Hirokun, why are you crying? Eh? I bring my finger to my right eye. When I look at it, I see that it's wet. Well, I mean, aren't your eyes always wet, though? Pretty sure that's how they work. <laughs> why am I crying? Did, did you have a nightmare? Serrano looks at me worriedly. I like how she said that, like, did you have a nightmare? Like, in the middle of eating cake. She takes out a handkerchief and gently wipes my eyes. Feel of soft silk on my face is incredibly pleasant. Oh shit, I hit the desk. I don't know, but for some reason I feel really happy right now. The warmth of the sunlight coming in through the window. The nice orange color it dyes everything in. The sound of people bustling about outside. The fact that I can express my feelings in words still. The fact that I can move freely. All of it just makes me happy. I see. Serrano finishes wiping off my tears and puts her handkerchief on the table. 
You've endured so many painful things, Hirokun. Letting yourself get hurt, losing so, losing so much for others, you've overcome so much suffering. But why do you have to suffer in the first place, Hirokun? Serrano. You've worked so hard. Always blaming yourself, shouldering all those painful feelings. You've already worked hard enough, Hirokun. So it's alright. You don't need to suffer anymore. Yeah. I always wanted someone to say that to me. I wanted to be forgiven. That's why I kept hurting myself. That's why I always picked the harder path. I chose to go where pain and suffering would be waiting for me of my own volition. I thought if I was able to endure through it long enough, someone would forgive me. They tell me it's okay to stop. It's okay to just forget it all. I've never been waiting so long to hear that from someone. I hear a sound coming from behind me. But when I turn around, there's still no one there. It's just the counter where you order cakes in the door. So what was that sound just now? I stand up and head towards the door. If you leave, you'll just suffer more. I stop and turn back to Serrano. This warm light, these vivid colors, these pleasant noises... You might lose them all again. You might have even more painful experiences waiting for you. That's right. I don't want to suffer anymore. I don't want anything stolen from me anymore. Key. I wonder which blue-haired girl it could be. I hear that sound behind me again. It's coming from the door. The outside world is just trying to steal something from you again, Hir Hirokun. You don't need to go back to such a dangerous world. Again, in addition to the knocking, I hear a girl's voice. A voice I recognize. I turn back to the voice. Hiroki! I take a step towards the door. Hirokun, are you sure? You'll just have to go through more hardships. You'll just get hurt again. I know. If I step outside, I'll have to return to that place once more. But I just can't, can't ignore her voice. I don't know why I feel that way, but I do. I take one more step towards the door. Voice of a girl I must never forget. Very subtle. Yeah. It's very subtle, because he shouldn't forget her, and that her is obviously Reina. Hiroki! I hear her voice clearly now. It's Reina's voice. Reina. I start running to the door as I call her name. Reina's calling for me. But when I finally reach the door, the knocking in Reina's voice both, dis both disappear. I look out the small glass window that's on the door, but there's a blinding white light coming through and I can't see Reyna at all. I give the door a strong push, but it doesn't budge. Reyna! I call Reyna's name, but there's no reply. I pound on the door over and over with my right hand, but I don't hear any pounding back from the other side. Damn it. I push on the door with both arms and even my head. Suddenly I sense someone behind me. Hirokun, why are you trying so hard to go outside? Do you really have to keep struggling? It's Serrano's voice. I answer without turning back. I don't like pain and I don't want to suffer anymore. Honestly, I thought countless times about how nice it would be if I could just be with you like this forever, Serrano. But there's someone who needs me over there. And there's still some things I need to find out. That's why I need to go. 
Serrano, I'm sorry. I see. Softness. There's something soft gently pushing against my, against my back. A warm hand's hugging me from behind. I know you can still keep going, Hirokun. I hear Serrano's voice in my ear. When I turn around, there's no one there. The warm fight felt on my back quickly vanishes. The sound of townspeople bustling outside fades as well. There's no one here anymore. I square off against the door once more. I put both hands on the door and push. I pull all of my, put all of my strength into it. But the door doesn't budge an inch. I keep pushing anyway, unrelentingly. If I could just put some more power into it. I feel the door give slightly. Dazzling light pours through the small gap in the door. When even now the weight of the door pushes back against my arms, making sure the door doesn't close on me again, I keep pushing. Continually. With yet more force. Open, damn it! Light floods my field of view. The ground, the walls, even my arms. All of it is blotted out by the light. Ah! An instant later, the bright light disappears, leaving nothing but blackness. I'm pretty sure my eyes are open, but I don't see anything. Okay, I just want to say, I was liking that scene at first, but it got really a lot less subtle as it went on. Yeah. it was. I thought it was nice at first. It was probably the best written scene so far. Yeah. That's like, I, I, I think that, like, they couldn't, yeah, like, basically, if, if Serrano didn't spell it out as much, and they didn't have, like, that, oh, and, like, she's banging on the door, and I must never forget her name, like... Yeah. I think they could have just had, like, oh, like, kind of, like, the subtle thing with the voice in the background, where it's, like, you know, it's Reyna mm -hmm. through context. And then just, like, oh, yeah, so, like... I'm she's pretty sure my door. eyes are open, but I don't see anything. <laughs> Hiroki. I hear Reyna's voice next to me. Reyna's right next to me. I can feel it. I feel like there's a lot of people around me. I guess I'm back in the Connect Center now. I wonder how long my consciousness was floating in that place. I don't know, but I'm back now. Reyna's screams brought me back. Hiroki, oh, you're still alive. I hear Reyna's teary voice, but I have no way of knowing what kind of situation she's in right now. Aina. I still can't speak properly, and my head feels like it's about to crack open. Now I'm pretty sure my condition's even worse than before now, but for some reason I feel strangely calm. When I focus my concentration, I can feel the center of my body heat up. And then that tingly electrical feeling starts flowing through me again. When I clench my fist this time, I feel a surging of power that wasn't there before. I can do this. I pour strength into my bound limbs, and almost instantly the belts all snap. My body is free again. I jump off the stretcher. I focus the nerves in my feet, preventing me from tumbling forward the moment I land. The, the, the soundtrack went all dubstep right now. Oh, let me, let me. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, why? Uh, okay. Um, can I have it back? No. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we can't, can't. I don't want. Don't know if I'll get a strike for it or anything. Whatever. Ha! Yeah. I hear a scream and turn my head in the direction it came from. As I do, I realize something. My vision's still dark, but I can vaguely make out a person's silhouette now. And one more thing. I can move the right side of my body again. Timidly, I open my mouth. Reyna? My speech has come back to me. It looks like my healing powers are working again. Reyna, where are you? Hiroki, your words. I turn my head in the direction of the voice and see a much smaller silhouette. A moment after I register that's Reyna, I catch another silhouette rushing at me from the corner of my eye. You. The silhouette raises something overhead. The moment he raises it up, his movements become slow. His movements, yeah. If you're that slow, I simply step back to the location he's swinging at and avoiding his attack. Air whooshes past the left side of my face. I then throw my fist at what I believe is his face. There's a slight tingling sensation in my fist and the silhouette makes a strange noise as he crumples. Hiroki, behind you! At the same time I hear Raina's voice, I feel the air behind me shift. I reflexively twist around, bringing up my left hand. It's a new silhouette. He's holding an edged something in his right hand. Perhaps surprised that I turn to, turn to him, he stops for a second. Then using the momentum of my rotation to bolster the blow, I drive my left fist into his stomach. 
He squeals and drops his weapon and collapses to the ground. Shit, we need to hold him down! This time, three silhouettes rush me at once. With Reina guiding me, I mow all three of them down. There's a couple of screams and sounds of people hitting the floor. Every time I hear someone fall to the floor, my vision gets a little better and the color starts returning the objects. By the time I've kicked everyone's ass, my vision's back to normal. Ah. Shoulders heaving, I look around the room. There's close to ten researchers all collapsed on the ground. And I can see Reina clearly now as she runs over to me. Hiroki! Reina! Raina jumps into my arms. Gee, I wonder what we could possibly use as a thumbnail for this episode. It is yeah. such a difficult choice. Thank God. Yeah, thank goodness. Why did I say that? I thought you were gone for good, Hiroki. I was so scared. I was only able to come back because you kept calling my name over and over, Raina. When I thought I might end up all alone again, I... Raina doesn't say anything after that and just rests her forehead on my shoulder. I can feel Reina's warmth. I gently pat her head as we stay standing there like that for a few minutes. Eventually, we both let go and I realize that Reina's hands aren't bound anymore. What happened to the handcuffs, you? Oh, I just borrowed that guy's MRD for a bit. Reina points to one of the researchers lying on the ground. The restraints binding Reina's hands came off. Looks like using electronic locks backfired on them. That is a terrible fucking idea. Why do you need electronic cuffs for... Elect electronic lock for cuffs? They're fucking cuffs! I mean, even if you did, why would you let the person with the MRD immediately in the area have access over that, like... I see. Sorry for like, worrying you, Reina. Yeah, it's just that's what, like, the security guy in, like, the place with all the cameras would have access to, not some random fuckwad who can get jacked. I was so scared, or I was so worried about you. I'm really glad you're alive. Reina slowly pats my arms and shoulders as if to make sure I'm really there. However, she stops when she reaches my left hand. Now that I can see again, I look down at my own left hand. The place where my finger was cut off was healed over and isn't bleeding anymore. However, no new finger has grown in its place. Does it hurt? Not really, but it does feel weird. I see. I think back to Aoi-san, desperately trying to hold back her feelings with her eyes shut. And when she finally crossed that line, it seemed as if something inside Aoi-san snapped. I turn back to look at the AR display, but Kuroda's not there. The display itself seems to be off. Anyway, let's get out of here. Someone else might come after us. I go to check my MRD for the time. When I look back at my MRD, I see a message informing me that I've received a data packet. The sender is anonymous. Something wrong? It seems I've been sent something. This might be another trap. It's possible it's just another image of Aoi-san tied up somewhere. When I open up the data I received, I... This is... What appears before us is a huge AR display showing a map. It's a map of a large facility. There's a number of rooms all connected via a network of hallways that wind around like roots of a giant tree. The top part of the map says Connect Center B7. It's a map of the Connect Center. There's two markers on the map. One's a blinking yellow dot. The other's a large red double circle placed in a conspicuous, conspicuously, conspicuously large room. You have to defeat the yellow sub-boss to get access to the key to unlock the door to the two red bosses. I move around the room a little bit as a test to see that the yellow dot moves with me. It looks like that yellow dot is showing my MRD's current location, which means the other marker is... I guess it's telling us to go there. But who sent this? There are two possibilities that come to mind. The first is Kuroda. He might be telling us his location on purpose to lure us into a trap. However, there is one other possibility. And it's totally something he would do. It's Kakaru helping us! While I'm pondering my options, I hear the sound of footsteps in the distance. Whether we chose to follow the map or not, we still need to get out of here. Let's go, Reyna. We nod to each other and run out of the room. One day left, okay. Yeah, that, that's enough to wrap up the stupid... Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so... Yes. Okay, so yes. uh, what, what, what'll happen next time? Honestly, who gives a fuck? Do you give a fuck? I don't give a we'll fuck. We'll probably finish the game the next time you're over.
Yeah, yeah, hopefully. But that'll probably be a few more episodes. So, like, we're, we're not saying this is the second last episode, but just, you know. Yeah, there's probably a good out another good sesh. Chunk, chunk of it left. Um, Wait, do I? There's only three pages? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. It's lagging. It's lagging. Why is the save screen lagging? I don't need this right now. It, it. Okay. Okay, no, we just used up all the save slots. So save over the one of the first ones. Don't fucking matter. Oh, oh, hey, look, that's kind of cute. Where it's the it's when we first saved. It was in that same cafe we saw in this episode. Yeah. Let me do the first episode. <laughs> we did the second episode right after. Yeah. So. Uh, no, no, look at the dates. Oh. Yeah, almost a year. Just, just shows how much how long it's fucking taken us. Uh, uh yeah. Whatever. We we got saved. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Tune in next time. Will the plot make even less sense? Well, honestly, I've my mind's been blown every episode. Yeah, like, I want to say, oh, it can't get worse than that episode, because that episode was just a fucking slog of torture porn. But at the same time, I didn't expect that to happen. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's probably going downhill yeah. from here. Yeah. Anyways, thank you again, and have a good night. Bye-bye. Yes.